Yeah, well, anyway, Martin, <laughs> since, uh, since we're hearing nothing but dead silence in our earphones, uh, uh, I, know. I was going to say, you can hear the excellent new song by... Um, Oh, shoot, I'm going to embarrass myself. Shelly? Shelly? Shelly yeah. Siegel. Siegel, yes. Uh, lovely lady. I met her a couple mm -hmm. of times. Uh, you can listen to the podcast yourself after this ends, and you will hear that song. Why, that's amazing, <laughs> Russell. I shall do so immediately. <laughs> hey, everybody. Did you know that there's a podcast called The Atheist Experience, which also airs live? And, oh, we're on right now. Hi, how are you? This is the Atheist Experience. I'm Russell Glasser, and this is Martin Wagner. Uh, today is Sunday, February 21st, 2016. We're a live call-in, internet-based atheist TV show broadcasting from Austin, Texas, dedicated to promoting positive athe atheism and the separation of church and state. You can catch us live every Sunday on YouTube or Ustream.tv. Check out the official Atheist Experience website, www.atheist-experience.com. You can send us feedback by commenting on the official show blog, uh, blog at freethoughtblogs.com slash AXP. You can also email us at tv at atheist-community.org. And that's not all. Oh, it's not? What, if, what <laughs> uh, else, Russell? If you, if you do enjoy listening to this program, another show that you might like listening to is The Nonprofits, which airs the first and third Wednesdays of the month. It is also live on Ustream, and you can get the details at nonprofitsradio.com. And the next Nonprofits will be the first Wednesday of March, whenever that is that I didn't write down. Oh, okay. You don't have another... Well, yeah, I guess we are getting towards the end of... Uh... Yeah, we had our second show, and, and I'll tell you, we talked all about Antonine Scalia. I can imagine. <laughs> yes. uh, so if that you're not listening, died. then you missed it. Mm. Uh, and after this show, if you are local to Austin, you can join the cast and crew as we go down to Threadgills, the north location, 6416 North Lamar. And we would arrive around 6.30 or so after this show ends, so you have plenty of time to get from your home to there. Um, so, so, we have phones this week. I've noticed the new phone setup. It looks great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, this... This box. No, I'm not going to touch it because right. you know we notoriously have a lot of technical problems on the show, yeah. and I don't want to cause one you, with brand new if a equipment. Mosquito lands on that thing, I'm terrified. You know, the right, building's going to burn um, down or something. But I, the the phone system looks super cool, and we have a snazzy new oh, look, website yeah. that I can also use to activate things. Um, and unless you had something you wanted to talk about, Martin. Um, Did you? Not particularly. I'm okay. just sort of watching, uh, you know, everything, the, the entire world going insane. It seems like all around, all around us every single day. Yep. Uh, uh, so we're gonna <laughs> spend our first few minutes using the phone system on uh, repeat caller Hamish from Scotland, but only for a few minutes. Hey, welcome back, Hamish. How are you doing? Nope. Wrong button. Hamish, is that the right one? Blast it. <laughs> Wait a minute. It says Hamish is on air. Uh, Hamish, can you hear us? Oh, well, I wasn't going to leave him on long anyway, so I'm just going to put him back on hold. Okay. Uh, and then maybe we'll try it again later to see if he's uh, listening. Uh, Devin, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Oh, oh good. Yes, there yes, we sir. are. Thank you. Yeah, we've, a Welcome worried. to the show. <laughs> How are you doing? Thank you very much. I've been trying for a few weeks, so I appreciate the time. Oh, great. Certainly. Uh, what's on your mind? Well, I just was hoping for some advice. I'm an atheist, and I live in what is essentially Sin City to most people. But I still wanted people who claim that, that they're be atheists Las Vegas? to believe in non-scientific higher powers. Yeah. 
uh, people who, you know, how to deal with people who believe in nonsense? I do apologize in advance. It seems there's a 10 second delay between the speech. Oh, uh, I hope you're hearing us over the phone and not, uh, not listening to the stream while you're talking. Sometimes. I am hearing you over the phone. However, okay. it seems my voice isn't getting to you for another ten seconds. Oh, that's there's a there's a slight lag, but you know, we'll manage. Uh, okay. No. So your question was you you you're having to deal with people okay. who believe in not in supernatural higher powers. So, for instance, I have a neighbor who I am friends with who. She doesn't believe in a god. She does not believe in any sort of higher power, but she believes that, for instance, if her boyfriend says that her football team is going to lose, then they're automatically going to lose because he said it, and other such silliness. I have another friend who believes that there's something like this big electron, uh, which I know is a, uh, a joke from a comedian, but essentially, he thinks that there is some sort of energy pathway that connects all of us from those living and dead, which is essentially something similar to what Christians think with the whole talking to God and heaven and such. And I was just curious what you guys think of that, and in particular, how you try to communicate to the people who say, oh, yes, I'm completely logical, I don't believe in a higher power, but still have some semblance of a belief not backed <coughs> in any sort of scientific theory or proof. I guess my question to that person would be, uh, are you trying to convince me to believe in something like that? Because mm -hmm. if, uh, because there are a lot of people in the world with a lot of silly things that they think, and uh, for the most part, <laughs> I don't necessarily waste time on them. Um, like, like, you know, there there is one thing, or there there's one question, which is, what would I say to a person like that if they were going to get on the air on this show right now and argue with me? But then there's another kind of question, which is, they believe this silly thing, and I don't want them to. So how can I well, change their no, mind? I, I get the impression that um, you know, Devin is is I mean, <clears throat> that right. he, he that these people are in conversing with him, and so yes, uh, if this is a thing that comes up in. Uh, in conversation, I guess I would just sort of do our usual thing of, well, why do you believe that? And just kind of try to sound them out. And uh, and then, for example, with your first, uh, first uh, the, f the first person you mentioned where she seems to think that just that you can jinx things, right? Like you can think a certain way and I guess the power of your negative energies will influence the outcome. Um, you know, you might say, well, why wouldn't the, if 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 your mind can influence events in that way, why would not that work for positive things? I mean, if I just sit there and think hard enough that I'll win the lottery <laughs> next time around, um, sh shouldn't it happen? Based on, or, or is there a different principle at work? Um, there's a there's actually a very funny story that I read uh, recently, um, in which the uh, the protagonist. This fantasy story where the protagonist uh, realizes that he th he either has this kind of power or he thinks that he might have this kind of power, and uh, but but it affects things in an opposite way. And so, for example, if he if he gets a little overconfident, everything goes wrong. So he starts wishing to himself, "Okay, I I wanna I wanna fail this test miserably. I want absolutely none of my classmates to like me ever, no matter what I do." And he ends up, you know, scoring A's and and being the most popular kid in school. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it it just seems like that that is a testable claim, right? I mean, uh, otherwise she's just doing post hoc reasoning, right? You know, right. just a thing, you know, it, 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 because you know B happened because of A, but that's. Uh, you, but, you could always do something like the James Randi thing about mm -hmm. asking, you know, can you give me very specific details about what kinds of, of uh, abilities you think that this thing confers on you? Right. Like, could it influence the, uh, the outcome of a coin flip or a die roll or something? And then get them to uh, agree to some very specific test and agree in advance that it's fair and then perform the test, which I'm pretty sure won't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but that's only assuming that they're making claims about some kind of... I like kind that of, a lot, hypothesis and that experimentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for instance, um, you know, uh, I... 
I'm trying to think of something sufficiently random. Like if I roll ten dice, if I roll dice ten times in a row, um, I think it's not unreasonable to say that probably you won't get five sixes if you predict that in advance. Like like, or especially a run of five sixes or mm -hmm. or something. I mean, I'm trying to think like a game designer now because you don't want something that's so likely that it'll just come up randomly. Yeah. But you you get the idea. It's like, can you do this? Would you be willing to make a prediction that you can that you can get this outcome? Yeah. And what do you, and how much do you want to bet? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that's really all you, all you can do is to try to get them to think a little more clearly about not not it's not just the beliefs, but what what it would mean, what life would actually be like if it was really true what they what they believed. Um, you know, try to take it out of whatever particular you know the, the the limited range of whatever particular example that they're giving. For example, you know, my favorite my favorite football team lost. And say, yeah, but I mean, expand upon that because that, that's another thing that um, Randy, for example, and like the psychic debunkers, always point out is that people have a tendency to remember, you know, it's confirmation bias. You yeah. either remember the you remember the hits and forget the misses, and and so, you know, a particular event impacts you, and you might develop this idea that well, it happened because of this, and um, like I was just thinking about this old college roommate of mine, and voila, I bumped into them in, in the supermarket. What? A, my goodness, it must have been fate or something. And he said, well, yeah, because you right in that moment, you're not thinking about maybe every single other time that you were thinking about that particular friend or any friend of yours or anyone right. you know at all and you did not have a sudden chance meeting at that moment. Yeah, but uh, th th that's yeah. assuming that they're saying anything that's specific enough to make a prediction about. A lot of people who are new agey just speak in vague terms about energy or, or powers or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's perfectly reasonable to go with a position of, well, you think that there's this mega electron or whatever, and I think it's nonsense. Mega electron. So <laughs> new from Image Comics. Yeah. Issue number one. Um, <laughs> so, so if you think that and I think this, can we just go on thinking that each other is full of crap? You, you know, does it make a difference to you? Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate the advice, guys. I really do. And I apologize for the background noise. Ironically, I just had a couple of Jehovah Witnesses come to my door and I had to <laughs> vote him. Oh, oh man, you should have taken You're just having all away. the fun over there. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I do really appreciate Man, can you I imagine? Know. I never get Jehovah's Witness. This is the first time I've ever got them. I want you know, it's because you called an atheist show. The Jehovah's <laughs> right. Witnesses turned they, they, they knew. They tuned yeah. into the mega electron. That's exactly and, it. They got the uh, it signal. told them, they you're knew. needed. We jinxed it. That's what it was. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, they, they were able to... See? That, there you go. There's your science. Right. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for calling. Right. Well, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate your time and the advice. And... Uh, Thank you. Bye. Appreciate no problem. It, Take care. See ya. All right. Here we go again. Hello, Hamish. Are you there? Hello, Russell. Hello, Hamish. Hey, I got a question for you this time. You always, you always start. You always it's start. my turn. <laughs> uh, I'm being on. That's all right. Um, you know, we have gotten a lot of. Uh, uh, like fake callers who just want to entertain themselves uh, being on air in the past. And there are some people in the audience, and I think audience, Matt also <laughs> said <laughs> that he's suspicious that you are one of those. Uh, do you have anything to say about that? I am absolutely not a fake caller. Okay. I remember well, what Matt said. There you have it. Right. Well, hey. what, what I'm wondering is... What's the big deal about this show to you? I mean, you seem to be really you fixated. Be really you seem to be really fixated on calling this on show, calling uh, this show every, single week. every single week. And my question is, uh, you know, you're probably not moving to change our minds. So, uh, are you just looking for company or what? You say that I'm not going to change your minds, but. Yeah. Do not believe that you've ever changed any mind on air of any of your theists. I do actually. 
I, I mean, we get the emails from folks, so yeah, either we, they're all we fakes have or direct all... confirmation of that. Yeah, I mean, isn't maybe it's maybe true. it's not like a lightning bolt where they change their minds right that instant. Their minds but right that instant. Usually, what we'll do is. We, we, let, we encourage them to think for themselves, and sometimes if they come around to a point of view that agrees with ours, then they do it on their own. Yeah, but I'm also wondering, like, do you call other shows or just other ours? Shows or just ours? I'm not familiar with other but allow me to say oh. this. Your audience is the main target of your uh, persuasion, is it not? Sure, yeah. Well, just because I will not persuade you does not mean that people in the audience will not come to Christ through my teachings. Oh, well, given that the goal of the show is to mainly discuss atheism, what motivation do we have to keep taking your call every week? I mean, the main reason that we're talking to you is, is kind of contingent on whether the calls are interesting. Well, I have a question this week, which I find is very pertinent. You're not answering my question. That's why you should take my call, because I believe that my question is relevant to the subject of atheism. Uh, I think we've like, given like you enough others. time for the, for, for the last few weeks, and I think that I'm going to let Matt decide let whether Matt or not to take your question Matt's next time. I was just curious, that's all. See ya. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, for the record... I don't really feel strongly that Hamish is faking. I just I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's we we obviously the point of our show is to take uh, you know, both calls from the general public, both theists and atheists. Right. But um, we have had a lot of our repeat callers before, and right. you know, Hamish, if you have gotten some in indicate, well, it's probably not fair to talk to the guy that he's not online. Well, but yeah. If, yeah, if you know, if if Hamish has, I don't got, know if he listens to the whole show or not. Yeah, if he's gotten you know contacted by folks who have have actually told him, why yes, I have come to Christ through your discussions with the guys on. <laughs> I was an atheist before, but I listened to you and you turned. Well, that's terrific, right? But um, we we do well, have the I don't emails. Think our listeners have any way of getting yeah. in touch with him. Yeah. Although, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it seems like if you're really out there to, yeah. if you're out there to evangelize uh, for your religion, there are probably more effective ways to do it because I don't really think that Hamish is reaching our viewers the way he hopes he, he might be. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, mm. And after, after, yeah, after try a, while, a street corner or something, yeah. or maybe start your own internet. Show. Because when it gets to the know. point where you're just spinning around in this sort of conversational cul-de-sac and not getting anywhere, then it just feels like, you know. But anyway, right. how well, about uh, Angela? Hello. Hi. How are, how are you? you? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Thank you for thank you for calling. Okay, yeah, there is a bit of a lag as well. Same yeah, as, uh, um, I've heard. Iceland, <laughs> anyway, yes, I'm also in Scotland. Okay. And I, I will say I believe Hamish is real. The accent is bang on. If he's not from Scotland, then it's... Yeah. Take okay. him damn good. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I certainly did. Uh, listeners yeah. take that for what it's worth. Yeah. I never thought that he was yeah. faking the accent, but only maybe that he would just, he would just had reasons for calling that might not, you know, that might be more. I, I don't understand his reasons because he's certainly not um, the typical Scot when it comes to this. Is that right? Um, that, what? that was why I was calling because I've, I've lived here for nearly 15 years and um, I grew up in Ohio, Southern Baptist family, and I've been around a lot of Pentecostals and mm -hmm. Evangelicals. I'm an atheist, of course, mm -hmm. but, but the... The attitude in Scotland generally is live and let live. Most of the Christians here are just normal. Mm -hmm. Nobody, they don't force their religion on people. Um, there, there's a silly meme going around the Internet. It has been for a while. Um, uh, it has something to do with there's an atheist and a Muslim and a pagan and a Christian all in a coffee house. And they sit together and they talk and they laugh and they have a good time because they're not assholes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> that may spark some truth to people, but quite honestly, in Scotland, that is the way it is. Mm -hmm. You can get a group of people together with seven different beliefs, and <laughs> perhaps it's just the area where I live, and I don't know. Yeah. But I've been a, a lot right. of places in the UK, and 
it's uh, pretty also, I mean, for my part, it's not that I'm particularly against talking to Hamish more. Uh, I kind of enjoyed the first time I talked to him when Neil Carter was on with me. Uh, sure. We both had a good time, and uh, he could well be for real, but also uh, I don't feel comfortable turning the show over to the same caller every week and yeah. just letting people yeah. think that this is their individual so far. Well, also, but yeah. generally speaking, yeah, I mean, this sort of, I, I, I know that this American style of, you know, just Bible thumping of uh, <laughs> Christian evangelism is something that's just baffling uh, to not just people in, in the UK, but, you know, Europeans, uh, generally, it just seems very strange, and there, there is a bit more of a, uh, you know, you do you kind of attitude. Um, and to, to the degree, I mean, religion just is not, I mean, there's a lot of concern. I know in the Church of England and everything, just the way in which it's, it's falling so much out of just the average citizen's day-to-day you know, -day life plans um, that it's just not a part of people's lives. If they're anywhere, to, to the extent that they're afraid that, um, you know, I, well, I understand churches are just shutting down over there entirely. Quite a few, just no attendance. Mm -hmm. And it's... Um, well... Actually, the, the Christian churches in our area, they're either, they're Church of Scotland mostly, there's a few kind of fringe churches, but um, they're more a place of community mm -hmm. as opposed to push your religion on somebody. Yeah. Um, my mother-in-law's a Christian, but she's, she thinks the American Christians are really bizarre. Mm -hmm. and, and she's been evangelized to one time on holiday when they were over there. And, yeah, so from her perspective and my husband's perspective and his family, it, it is really strange because the Christians here is kind of just a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm convinced a lot of people in these churches are probably atheists, but they're, it's a part of the community. Yeah, it's a, a traditional in the churches. exercise, it's, yeah. Yeah, well, there's outreach programs. There's One of the churches here does great with people with addictions and, and things like that, and people who need help, and they go there for sometimes counseling, and it, mm -hmm. it, it's not, <laughs> I, I, I am losing my words here, I can't even yeah. think, it, it's, it's not like it is in America, where mm. yeah. in America I very did, I felt as if religion was forced on me. Yeah, but yeah, here yeah, it's, it's, just, it's uh, normal. And, and, and there's not, it's not just Christianity. I have pagan friends and Muslim friends, and same thing. Mm -hmm. We're all just people. Mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be many barriers. It, it's like, okay, you've got green eyes, and I have blue eyes. Mm -hmm. So what? And, and, and here <laughs> in the U.S. Way. particularly, it, it really tends to be strictly <clears throat> Christianity that is that forcefully evangelical in its approach. Because, again, we're, we're a melting yeah. pot of many, many religions as well, but you won't... Um, you know, you don't see American pagans grabbing people by the scruff and say, if you don't come to Beltane, you're hey, damned! Hey. <laughs> you know, so you, you just I don't... I want to burn your child. You don't get that, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not... Uh, it's, so it's, it seems yeah. to be... Uh, it's, so it's a Christian thing, but then it's specifically having to do with... Uh, and I, you know what I think a lot of it's got to do with? Uh, it's the money. It's such a massive money-raking... You know, it just vacuums up cash for yeah. you know that it's that particular collection very, of very profitable of for very some reason or another. Yeah, some of, of politically. I, I say, well, the really politically yeah. active, um, uh, you know, pastors and people in the evangelical community, the ones who have the ear of politicians, even though they're not, they technically shouldn't, um, due to the establishment right. clause. But I um, think a distinction needs to be drawn between the evangelical Christians and what I'd like to say the normal Christians. Yeah. There is a distinction. Yeah. There are very yeah. liberal Christians as well. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. there there are there are a lot of rank and file Christians out there who just are, are, are kind of disgusted by you know the money grabbing preachers um, as well. Yeah, but the, but the point is thing. that they have been able to turn their churches into these massive multi million dollar you know uh, affairs and and personally enrich themselves yeah. and um, you know, and they do have the ear of politicians. George W. Bush. Uh, took you know meetings in the Oval Office with you know James Dobson and and Pat Robertson and uh, all you know all of these specific Christian leaders didn't include anyone else you know nobody from the the pagan community or the you know no imams I don't probably know you know uh, you know 
rabbis or, or anything like that. And so there is, yeah. I think, a, that connection just with religion and money and power and influence here in the States that there isn't in, you know, England, Scotland, Europe. And, and so that's... Yeah, well, well that, that was the reason for my call. I'm getting off on a tangent, I know. <laughs> well. but, but the original reason, reason for my call was to... Um, the, I, I've always tried to figure out why that is because I've been both places. I've seen both experiences, and in my mind, it just boggles me that mm-hmm. you can be so open here and nobody bothers you for it. So mm-hmm. why, why is it so different? Why, why are Americans so zealous? We don't know. <laughs> I, I don't, um, it's it's uh, probably I mean, to, to do, maybe. I, I'm, I'm going to... I yeah. I heard Not kind of a... I, I mean, fundamentalism is a very American phenomenon. And from what I've heard of the history of uh, religion in the United States, when people started... I, I, I mean, religion was this very rigid, structured, hierarchical thing in in uh, pre-American Europe, yeah. and then Americans showed up and started being pioneers and and forging their way out west and into the South and the Appalachians, mm-hmm. uh, and there was nobody to tell them what to do, and so you know, just some yahoos <laughs> were able to set up. Uh, their own private church, and when it started making money, mm. uh, well, I, 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 I don't know. They, this may be yeah, I'm not kind I mean, of half cocked. I'm, I'm not a historian. I'm an armchair history, history buff at best. I don't mm-hmm. have any academic credentials to be saying any of this. But I, from what I understand, this, the gratifying myth of of early America that they like to sell is this idea that, you know, the the the, the settlers came over to because they didn't have religious freedom where they were, and they came yeah, over here to practice nonsense. they wanted to freedom. <laughs> Them. But you know the Puritan, did. yeah, the Puritan uh, <laughs> communities were these horrifically rigid and intolerant theocracies, where right. you know you could be banished for the least little thing, and ostracized and yeah. punished, and have you know and be have stone, you know, killed with under the weight of stones and mm-hmm. whatever. So they certainly. So I mean, they still had the authoritarianism yeah. for sure, yeah. but a lot of re- times the reason that religions break off and splinter into into different factions is because some group or another doesn't mm. like submitting, you know, would like yeah. to be the head honcho. And so that probably has a lot to do with area. why they felt like they needed to come to the new world to begin with. It's not that, you know, they needed the religious yeah. freedom yeah. from the oppressed. No, it's, it's like because I they were be the, the ones who cheese. wanted to be assholes <laughs> about their religion and, you know, the, the, the countries and the I communities think. they were. I think they were the ones forcing their religion, not others. Yeah, and right. uh, then, where they the lived, they, they couldn't you know, force it. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of you know people putting up with that, so they came here where they could start fresh and do it. So right. it could all tie into that, but um, yeah, it's. it's yeah, but that's but just I'm afraid we don't have definitive answers for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, I know. I've got several theories myself. Mm-hmm. I won't go into all of them. But yeah, okay. just just mm-hmm. by observing people and cultures and and religion, just <laughs> observation. I'm no expert by any means, mm. but. Yeah. yeah, I've got a few theories. But well, you know, we're Americans. Theories? If we can find a reason to be assholes about something, we will. I think it's just <laughs> our... Hey, it's, an, it's, it's in our, mer- it's in our America DNA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a that's cheeseburger on an aircraft carrier held by a supermodel or something. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> yes, that's American. Okay, I well, all well, you Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Russell. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But okay, it's past my bedtime. I'm okay. Be here. <laughs> well, we Go do. We, sleep. We're six hours ahead of you. Mm. Well, we do appreciate um, the call, and, and thanks very much. And um, yes, okay, you, you guys know. are fabulous. Someday we'll be in Austin, Texas, and we'll stop by Thread Guild. Oh, definitely. Oh, and in, yes. in case it's not clear to our audience. From now, I don't know. All yeah. right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Thank see you, ya. Angela. Bye, guys. Thanks, Angela. Thanks. Yes. Uh, in case it's not apparent to our audience, because we do get questions from time to time, absolutely anyone is welcome to stop in for a taping of the Atheist Experience and also the nonprofits. Um, we have a nice little fac on the webpage, uh, freethoughtblogs.com slash AXP, which tells you exactly how and when you can just walk on in oh. when we're airing. Pin drive to the top, isn't it? What? On the blog, it's that information. Oh, those, yes, yeah. it is. It's a pinned post, I think. That's right. All righty. 
Uh, so we're going to take Michelle in New York. Are you there? Yes. How are you guys doing this evening? Hi. Fine. Fine. Nice to hear from you. Oh, well, nice to hear from you. Thank you so much for taking my call. It's a pleasure. Sure thing. What's on your mind? Um, so I just have a question for you guys. I'm, you know, not here to debate, so not to debate to be in the morning, but if you don't mind, I do just have a question for you guys. Mm -hmm. So I've heard, I've been watching your show. I'm, I'm a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, I've been watching your guys' show for months now on, <laughs> on end, and, and I've really just been trying to diagnose, you know, like what you guys believe, why, why you believe it. And so here's my question. I've heard in the past, like Matt Dillahunty has said, you know, why don't, you know, if there is a God, you know, the God of the Bible, this is the God I'm talking about, if there is a God, you know, why doesn't he appear to everyone? Why is he so hidden? Why is, so let me ask you guys a question if you don't mind. I'm just asking this because um, I'd like to know. What proof do you guys need if there was a God that you guys would be able to say, okay, there is a God because of this? Like, what proof would you guys need? If you don't mind me asking. No, that's actually, that's a common question. Uh, um, okay. you know, well, what, what sort of proof would it take? And the answer mm -hmm. I'm going to give you might sound like a okay. cop-out, but it really isn't. Uh -huh. um, okay. The answer is, if the Christian God exists and he exists as described, which is an you know, omniscient being, mm -hmm. it occurs to me that this God, even if I couldn't answer you, even if I had to say, Michelle, I've got no idea what it would take, Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. This this God would know what it would take to convince me of His existence, even if I did not. Right. And uh, you know, we, we we see that you know the Bible is full of, for example, you know, just conversion stories or like the you know Saul's road to Damascus experience and all of that sort of thing, mm -hmm. where God just presents right. Himself and says, "Here I am." Um, it could, it could be something like that. It might be, it, it could be entirely different. God might, uh, you know, look at Russell and myself and say, well, these fellows, you know, what worked on Saul would not work on them necessarily. So, but, but I know what else to try mm -hmm. because I'm God and I know what to do in the circumstance. Uh, so the right. long and short of it is that um, you hear skepticism uh, often uh, equated with just cynicism or denialism, and it's regrettable that maybe there are some skeptics out there who just are a bunch of you know grumps and fuddy duddies, and they just well, I want mm -hmm. it. But um, I like to say that you know the, the the best way to practice skepticism is always the yes, you are open-minded. It's not about closed-mindedness; it's about open-mindedness. But it is about mm -hmm. open-mindedness to compelling evidence, and sometimes evidence is a thing that you, you, know, you don't know what it is, what it would be, until suddenly you stumble upon it, and then you have that moment of epiphany where you're like, well, well there it is, and I, I had no idea, and now that I see it so clearly, um, it, it all makes sense to me. Um, and, and that's really the only way I can, I can answer you, because again, we've had Christians call our show and ask us what you've asked mm -hmm. us, and then they will try to give um, you know, like for example, little examples, like, well, what if a... Uh, the image of a cross materialized on the, the studio wall right in front of you. You know, what would you mm -hmm. think of that? And I'd say, there could be any number of things. I, I, I could be losing my mind. Right. Every single episode of Scooby-Doo yeah. demonstrates. What if you that, had some kind of a yeah. Scooby-Doo experience? Yeah. And uh, I don't know, somebody could well, have spiked that, my well, coffee. Well, or, right. yeah, it's, I kind of feel like I've thought about this before. I thought about, you know, Russell, you, because I, I've heard your testimony, you know, how you became an atheist. And I just feel like, you know, if God came to you guys, and I'm, and I'm not saying this in a negative way, and thank you for answering my question. But I feel like, like, say Jesus came to you guys, or God came to you guys in a dream. Wouldn't you guys just say, oh, well, that was a dream, or, you know, or you guys are having a bad night. You wouldn't well, recognize that as, let oh, me yes, actually, I got to have the Paul experience. Right. Or, or, you, or would you guys say, okay, well, that wasn't the Paul experience, because I don't know what that was. Let, let me actually um, put it to you this way. Um, theists sure. come at this question with the notion that, okay, God obviously exists, and atheists is atheists are being stubborn because uh, they're just going to deny the existence of God in any possible way they can. I'd like to turn that around and, and mm -hmm. point out that mm, for things that really do exist, usually convincing me that they exist is not that hard. Right. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. like, I've, I've only heard your voice for the last five minutes, mm -hmm. and I'm convinced that you exist. I'm convinced that you're right. a real person. I, uh, you know, I don't know a lot of details about you, um, mm -hmm. but 
I believe you exist. And it would be interesting for starters if, for instance, mm -hmm. God would call this show. Or, uh, or uh -huh. God, God would clear, get but, in touch, or yeah. just drop me an instant message on Facebook and say, hey, I'm God, sorry I haven't been talking to you much, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's a start. <laughs> that, um, the thing it all sounds very glib, but keep in mind that, the, yeah. that we're right. sort of thinking of this in terms of, you know, what Christians tell us when they describe uh, their religious. Say, well, I don't really have a religion. What I have is a personal relationship with the Lord, and mm -hmm. um, and and that's how a right. lot of Christians frame and their belief. And so we're like, okay, well, personal relationships usually start with some sort of, you know, intercommunication. Right. right. Like I don't right. I don't believe that my mom exists because I have conversations with her in my head that feel very real to me and influence right. my thinking. I actually have direct conversations with her, like let's say that whole burning bush incident that mm -hmm. that we read about in in the story of exodus but like i said it's only a start um but there are a lot of different properties that god is supposed to have and convincing me of each one of those properties like right. convincing of me of all of them at once might be really challenging but convincing me mm -hmm. of maybe one or two at a time uh that like first of all the whole Facebook message would be like, okay, uh, there is definitely somebody at the other end of this line, tell me something about yourself. And if he says, mm -hmm. like, okay, I know everything about you, I might want some specifics. Like I'd say, uh, what was the name of my cat when I, when I grew up? Or, uh, y you know, the scene in the movie where, like, you, uh, the the kid is calling his mom. I'm mom. I've been kidnapped, but I'm okay. And she's like, "Convince me that it's really you. Tell me something that only you would know." Right? That's. Oh, okay. Is your mic uh, rubbing your shirt or anything? Okay. Sorry. Maybe you could fix that. Anyway, I. Convincing me in a stepwise fashion that some of the things that uh, that God is supposed to be about uh, are really true uh, is possible. You see what I'm saying? Did we lose uh, Michelle? Got... Uh, guys, when you muted me, you didn't mute her as well, did you? Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, Michelle doesn't seem to be on the air, and she was on line four. Michelle, can you can we hear you now? Is there somebody on this line? Shoot. <laughs> uh oh, we're sorry, well, Michelle. All right. I think we just had a tech issue. Also, I apologize, uh, guys. Apparently, my mic has been making all kinds of horrible noise and scratchy mm. noise this whole show. <laughs> I was hearing it. I, I just I didn't realize that was your fault. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was the, in, just in the headphones or what, but uh, hopefully, it's, hopefully it's okay now. So. Okay. Well, I so think you guys started. should check whether Michelle is still on line four sure. or not. And if not, we're really sorry. I hope you're going to call back. Yeah, because we liked your question. Thank you. All right. Uh, James in, whew, I'm not even, you, James, where are you from? <laughs> I'm uh, from uh, Britain, rural Britain, Boston. Oh, okay. Okay, thanks for calling. What's on your mind? Um, it's just a bit of a thought. I get into quite a lot of discussions, I suppose is a nice way of putting it, with um, young earth creationists. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a subject I find very, very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've come across a, a, a really nice, non-offensive, statistically-led argument that seems to just stop them. Okay. All right, what's that? Um, do you know how many uh, peer-reviewed papers supporting ev evolution have been published? I can... <laughs> uh... A lot. Peer reviewed and, papers supporting evolution. Right. Yeah. I, I can imagine quite a few because you know the, if if the entire uh, you know that that entire field, um, you know you'll you'll hear professional scientists say we, we can't do biology without evolution. So I imagine that it has quite a bit of literature 
Uh, right. That's, that's been vetted and studied and expanded upon, and, and there's, a, there's a vast wealth of it, would be my guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to conservatively three, guess more than 10,000. Very over conservative. 360,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was going to go up to 100,000, but I didn't want to <laughs> overshoot. Do you know how many white papers have successfully discredited evolution? Yeah. Uh, none. Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vastly right. few. I mean, have you tried this on theists? Because, you know, we t do talk to a lot of young Earth creationists, and I think <clears throat> that counting up peer-reviewed papers is not something that they're going to necessarily be persuaded by. Yeah, they not like, only do they well, not really find that persuasive, they... Um, their response to it, the creationist uh, response to that, has been to just make up their own peer-reviewed journals, right? Yes. And so, yeah, I'm <laughs> so it's a like, bunch of clowns writing and being peer-reviewed Right, so by there, clowns there are things like the Institute for Creation Research and, yeah. the, and stuff like that. I mean, everyone sees through the charade, but yeah, um, I, I think yeah. that... Uh, yeah, well, they, I... I I normally get the follow-up, ah, oh, but it's a Darwinian conspiracy. Yeah. Um, and my argument back to that, which is normally where the sort of conversation ends, is do you really think you can involve that many people um, in a conspiracy and not have the uh, secret come out? Uh, and the answer is Satan certainly is devious, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not saying that you're wrong in this approach. I'm, I'm just saying that in my experience, there, uh, you know, there isn't one single magic bullet argument that's going to fix a creationist thinking. And usually, uh, in having this discussion, arguing about the specifics of evolution is not so fruitful from what I've seen. No. Uh, compared to stepping back a few steps further and having a real discussion about epistemology and like, you know, how did you come to these conclusions? And, oh, you say the Bible tells you that, that the earth was created this way. Why do you believe that? And, and that sort of thing. Um, another, another question that I love to ask, especially sort of the young earth creationist crowd is, um, do you think Catholics are Christians? Mm -hmm. Uh, some do, some don't. Many of them don't. Yep. Um, and at which point I said, so where do you get your Bible from? Uh, they will say, <laughs> you're just trying to put us in the, in the theist seat and like have an atheist experience in the other direction, it feels like. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, but, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm going to... <laughs> I, I think and you have to understand a lot of, you know, you, you will, there are some <laughs> creationists that you can talk to, but there mm. are a great many that you simply can't. And um, you're, you present them with evidence and evidence and evidence and evidence. And the thing about it is that <laughs> when you realize what they are invested in is a need to reject science based upon their belief that if all of this is true, if we just evolved, you know, from the amoeba in the primordial slime, <coughs> then, uh, well, we're just, then we're just random, you know, we're not blessed with that lovely God stuff, you know, we're not, we're not special beings, and uh, then there's, so if no God made us, then there's no salvation, nothing to look forward to after death, but simply being dead. Uh, so there's a whole lot, th those, those emotional hooks that religion uh, gets into you and uh, you know, the fear that of mortality that religion exploits, I think is quite a big motivator uh, in what you know, makes so many creationists just so inflexible. Whatever kind of pseudoscientific you know, uh, charade they'll hide behind to try to argue uh, for their creationism, Really, they are, you know, as I was talking about uh, with Michelle, they really are just being denialists um, because they have a real need. They, they've got the, you know, the, the hooks got into their limbic system. They have the emotional need to uh, say, well, no, when I die, I'm not really going to die. I'm just going to go <laughs> on to some, you know, beautiful, exalted uh, state and, and, and live in paradise forever. Um, it's, fear of mortality is, a, is, I mean, yeah, Christianity figured that one out. It's like, boy, if we can get them right. on that, we, they're ours. So, um, <laughs> you know, this, the, the church certainly knew what it was doing. 
uh, in that regard. And so that, I think, is really why so many of them just, it's, why can't I get through to this person? Well, that's why, I mm. think. Yeah, it's, it's, it's self-deception. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a deist. I don't like the idea of a supernatural God in, in any shape or respect. Um, I don't believe in an interventionist God. Um, I think when you die, you die. Oh. <laughs> so, so you like the idea of supernatural beings. Do you think there is one? Um, I, I mean, my my personal view is, you know, we're all part of the universe, and it's the universe trying to understand itself. Okay, I guess that's harmless enough. Well, I mean, <laughs> exactly. I, I guess in as much as we all, what, all of our atoms originated in stars, and, and then it was exploded, and uh, my whole life is, yeah. So I guess I'm. That's my big question in life. Why did I explode? <laughs> yeah. you know, that's, and uh, it's, I, I have to from my point of view as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> but um, okay. Um, one last thing, I was just going to say, if you can say a big hello to Jeff D, because he is actually one of my heroes. All right. Oh. Well, he'll appreciate I'll, uh, hearing that. Sure he I'll will. let um, him know the him next time I have... see him on the nonprofits. Definitely. I have uh, I have an original demigods and uh, deities book, and um, oh. yeah, I can fairly safely say I, I learned more about mythology through that book than an awful lot of uh, stuff I read as an adult. Yeah. Okay. Now, I remember I, I I was at that phase. Of, I, I remember right when that book came out, and I devoured it. It's like, wow, they've got them all. Nineteen seventy-nine. Think at some point in the future there will be a, a, a role-playing game or a board game. Uh, Christianity will have maybe gone its run its course, but you'll be able to play games where you're Jesus mm -hmm. or your uh, <laughs> or your your God or Jehovah or one of the one of the angels or something like that. There will be just <laughs> Entertainment right. on consoles <laughs> based on, uh, you know, what yeah. the crazy people 500 years ago used to believe. Well, but, I want to save funny. this sinner. <laughs> okay, roll a 20 sided die and compare yeah. it to your charisma. Uh oh, critical <laughs> fail. He's going to hell. Oh no. <laughs> I, I actually quite like the idea of a magic sort of like, um, Street Fighter style where yeah. you've got sort of Joseph yeah. Smith on one side. That would yeah, be I've great. Seen, like, what if no, I've seen it. of Mortal Kombat or Tekken? I've seen it. Like Somebody Jesus made, thing. like, a video of that. Uh -huh. I mean, it was one of sure, those, you know, salvation. funny or die kind of videos. Okay. Now, uh, anyway. Games. Someone should, I mean, there's no reason why you could, like, someone couldn't do a mod for one of the PC games. Well, they could. Uh, <laughs> the question is, is it worth their time? Uh, uh, well, they go all kind of crazy mods for other things. Right. So. Oh, uh, anyway, um, one, one last, one uh, last no, point. that Hamish last one you not, said was the last no, no, question. So Scott. thanks. For, what? Oh, oh, he wanted to talk about Hamish. Oh, eh. all right. Well, take care. Um, thanks for calling. Thank you for calling. Sorry about that. We'll, we'll pass the message <laughs> along to Jeff. You'll yep. appreciate that. Uh, Let's move on, though. Murat in Turkey. He's Can you hear us? Probably going to be a longer lag for an international. Oop, and I, it would help oh, to right hit the right again. button. There we go. Okay, Marat. <laughs> Hi. I'm can new to this phone guys? system. Yes. yes, I hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Great. Um, oh, my pleasure. Um, it's great to be talking to you. I've been watching your show for a long time. Um, well, first of all, my English isn't so great, so if I have a difficult time explaining myself, Please excuse me. Your English is um, fantastic. Have, fantastic. You sound pretty good to me, yeah. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, okay, I'll my Turkish things. anyway. So. <laughs> no doubt. Um, two things. Um, the existence of heaven. I read the Quran and I read the, the Bible. Um, the, both the Bible, the New Testament and Quran, talks about the existence of heaven and um when you die and you go there, it will be eternal. It will be forever, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I think people don't think about the meaning of forever uh, beyond just the word itself, because forever, it's like, um, it's not just 100 years or 1,000 years. It's going to be billions upon billions upon billions of years. It just never ends. Yep. Yeah. It just never ends. I mean, how can that possibly be heaven? It could be... It could be the most imaginably beautiful place, but after after several billion years, it's going to get pretty unbearable, isn't it? It's going to be like a it's going to be like hell. 
<laughs> you know, I understand where you're coming from, but I don't really like the argument that uh, um, that there's something terrible about eternal life necessarily. I mean, I've seen a lot of books and movies and shows that that show you just how awful it is, you know, some kind of Twilight Zone twist about how bad it is. But the fact is, I I don't feel like 80, 90, 100 years is enough. And I would d absolutely like to live a lot longer. And um, I enjoy life enough that... Uh, getting a whole lot more of it would seem great to me. Now, would I get bored after like a billion years? Maybe, but I would like my future self to be the one who gets to decide whether or not to keep going with that or not. Yeah, well, you see, it all depends on, you know, what's, what kind of novelty there is. I mean, what right. makes life exciting as yeah. it is, is, you know, the, the opportunity for new experiences. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you can, you can fill a normal human lifetime with quite a few experiences and uh, keep yourself from getting bored. Um, but sure, if you sure. like that, and, and so the problem would be, uh, mm -hmm. yes, if you could live for billions of years and the, you would, and in, doing, in so doing, you would actually like have the opportunity to you know, explore the you know, visit every planet and star system in the whole Milky Way and have all of these new experiences. Well, then that would be a way that uh, a billionaire lifespan, or, or but, but you know, would, would uh, retain that sense of novelty, and you wouldn't it wouldn't become a, this tedious hell for you. But the the problem with heaven, I think, is what the hell do you do there? I mean, that's kind of something yeah. Well, I, like the, this... I mean, the traditionally described heaven, absolutely no way. Sounds boring as shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, um, is is uh, you know? Do you just uh, you know, spend? Well, you do. You praise God. Do you know, you do. You, do, you, do you do you eat? Do you sleep? Do you right. rest? I mean, a lot of the a lot of the people in the Christian right who are a bit uh, you know sexophobic say, well, there's no sex there. <laughs> Why the hell am I going then? How is that what? heaven? Well, you, know? you guys have your sexophobic hell over or, yeah. or heaven over here. And we'll set up some other heaven where we don't have to get in touch with those people. Um, but that's actually, point, that lack of clarity to me is sort of like, okay, let's, yeah. say, let's say you are a faithful, uh, believing Christian all your life and you die and you go to heaven. And okay, so what do you, like, what do you, what's the first thing that happens? Is there, is it like, a turn, do you turn up at this sort of celestial airport when you get all hooked in and they, you know. Have you seen the, the, the um, Albert Brooks comedy, Defending Your Life? Yes. That was a really yeah. funny movie. Yeah. There's, I like that. And it's like, okay, let's say you go through that and then, so what, do you get assigned, is there a home or do you get to shop for your own home or are you assigned like a little pod? Um, and then, okay, so then day two, what happens on day two of eternity <laughs> in heaven? Um, you know, and day three. Sure. If, and, and well, assuming that. You're, you're thinking in terms of your existence in heaven in the same way that you think in terms of your existence in your life, which I think most believers do because that's our frame of reference. We can't really think outside of that, or at least most yeah. people don't apply enough imagination. I would actually that. say, I mean, I would also add that the lack of clarity about what heaven is like is a really good indication that it is completely made up because people have this vague notion of we're going to be happy forever and ever and what does that mean specifically how is this place architected what kind of schedule do you get to keep those kind of details aren't available and um and I think any believer worth their salt would say well that's not given to us to know yet but somehow they seem to come up yeah. with all these hypothetical details in their heads that are completely invented out of this vague idea, which is just solving the general problem. I don't want to die. What can yeah. I tell people to make them feel better? Yeah. Because I, 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 I don't. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just natural you know, self-preservation instincts. You know, no one relishes the idea of, of dying. <laughs> Um, but then it's also, we have to understand that our perspective is the one that we have at this point in our lives. And then as you get older, your perspective on things changes. And it may indeed even be that the older and older and older you get, you become just more accepting of your mortality at a certain point. Um, you know, I remember, you know, being very young, still a teenager, and my grandmother was celebrating her 75th anniversary. And so, you know, I see it just like, and Hope for 75 more, Grandma. And she was like, oh, no, heavens no, right? <laughs> so I, there could be a certain point where you're just like, yeah, I've, I've done enough now. It's just time to just, so, 
but it's based on the individual. It's based upon your look on things. And I think that um, when you are very young, obviously your unwillingness to die and your fear of death will be at its highest point because you are in the, the fullness of your youth and the prime of life. And so dying is just uh, yeah, not, not in your plans. And that's when I think it is very easy to kind of um, convert someone with that particular appeal to fear of their own mortality. Mm. I don't think, you know, and we've, we, this is now, I think, the second or so conversation on this episode where we've kind of brought that, that aspect of it up. I don't think for, you know, that all Christians or even maybe a majority of them became Christians due to being afraid of death. But to say that that isn't something that plays a role in it and to say certainly that belief in an afterlife is, isn't, you know, you know it, it definitely is a religion's way of responding to that that fear um, and, and that being a big part of it. So anyway, right. Uh, turn off ramble mode, Martin. <laughs> I hope I, I okay, I'm still uh, hearing my mic a little bit. I'm sorry guys if it's being real no. scratchy. I'm, I apologize. Okay. Um, I have one more thing. Let me see that. Um, God is supposedly, um, has always existed, right? One more time. What? Um, According to theists, God has always existed. Yeah, God right. is eternal and has always existed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, going back from the time that he supposedly created the earth, he must have existed forever before that. Mm -hmm. That means it has taken him forever to create the earth. Mm -hmm. So if it has taken him forever, he couldn't have possibly created it because forever cannot come to pass. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Eh, not really. Mm. I mean, I've heard that argument before. Uh... Well, uh, <clears throat> Christians respond to that. Actually, Christians often use that as an argument uh, against atheists, or, or uh, I don't know, they, they use it to argue that there couldn't have been an eternal universe back in time. I can't Oh, well, yeah, they do. They say infinite regress is not possible. But what, what I was right. going to say is that Christians respond uh, to that point usually by describing God as existing outside of time and space, in this realm outside of time and space. And then that just sort of sends me off on my path of, okay, well, what is this realm? Um, how would a realm outside of time and space work? What are mm -hmm. its laws? What are its constants? Um, if it exists outside of time and space, how would it be possible? Well, for what, not only what does it mean for any kind of a realm to be outside of time and space, but um, was, was that realm created at some point? And if so, then, there, then it would have a past, which would mean it really isn't outside of time and space, or... Uh, you see, so you can you can immediately just begin kind of shooting holes in the whole idea, um, but you have to be willing to say that if you're going to defend that idea, if if God exists within a realm of time and space, then uh, that realm has to either have something in it or some particular property about it that is separate from God. Right. Otherwise, well, all you're <clears throat> doing is you're you're using this realm outside of time and space in which God exists, that's simply just a, a metaphor. For, that's, that's just a new name you've given God. That's just a metaphor for God. And then at that point, they're, they're into the begging the question fallacy. You know, their anyway, answer is, what, am I? Well, I mean, speaking for myself, I am not so much a fan of arguments either for or against the existence of God that basically do some vague philosophical, oh yeah, this is hypothetically impossible because math and stuff. I like to nail down uh, Christians and... Uh, uh, well, that's what I was uh, talking about. You know. Well, yeah, I mean, based on uh, like specific details of what they believe and how they came to those beliefs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the kind of arguments that are being proposed about like hypothetically how could eternity work, uh, you know, coming up with my own answers to that, I don't see so much as my job, because I'm not the one who believes in it. Uh, I, I would be more inclined to ask, uh, you know, what are the details of, uh, of this eternity, and how did you come to that conclusion? 
in, instead of just trying to give a knockdown, all encompassing argument against the possibility of eternity. Anyway, I hope that helped. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that's an argument. It was just something that I was thinking about. Um, I couldn't find an answer to it, but um, right. if you say that, you know, God, the claim is that God exists out of time and space, then, you know, I suppose that's one explanation. Right. Well, I mean, I guess anyway, my... Anyway, thanks for taking my... Okay. Yes, thank, thank you very thanks. much for calling. Guys, um, we appreciate it, Mirat. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. I feel like my best advice is if you have these questions about how religion hammers out these details, you should actually get up the nerve to talk to some of the religious people and see what they have to say instead of making some atheists guess <laughs> what what Christians would say. Okay, I'm gonna try moving this. Um, okay, uh, just a heads up to people who are who may be still trying to call. Uh, it's 5:30. Uh, we typically go till six these days. Uh, we have six lines now, and they're all full. So. Uh, I would not really recommend that you keep trying to call if you haven't gotten on already. Just letting you know. Um, Emily in Florida. Oh, uh, hi. Hi. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I just had like two questions for you guys. Okay. Um, so my mom is Catholic and um, she would always ask me these questions whenever I would question faith or whenever I thought about, like, deconverting, and recently I have, and, but the biggest question she would ask me is, what if I'm wrong? Mm -hmm. And I don't really know how to answer that, because... Um, typically, the way I would approach that kind of question is I would ask, uh, you know, how worried are you that Muslims are right? And, uh, you know, have you heard about the Muslim hell and what do you think will happen to you if you are mistaken and Islam is the right religion? Because, you know, Christians typically ask as if there's only two possibilities, my particular religion or no religion at all. Um, but if you're going to say, oh, we should believe in something with no evidence because there might be bad consequences otherwise, it's a good idea to shift to some other religion and see if they have feelings about that. They might actually answer your question, answer their own question for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. It's, yeah, that was just on my mind because it would make me rethink my position completely. Mm -hmm. And my other question was, like, she would always talk about, like, how the Catholic Church had found, like, these letters, like, that Peter had sent and these scrolls that they had found. And if those scrolls, like, do exist or something, does that um, prove necessarily anything other than, I don't know. Are, are we talking about the Dead Sea Scrolls? Is that? Yes. Oh, okay. I think so. She doesn't um, really emphasize. She just keeps saying that. So, um, I think my advice to you there would be to actually go to look up the Dead Sea Scrolls on Wikipedia or something like that, and read about it and get as familiar with it as you can, and then go to your mom and say, "Hey, I've read all this stuff that you asked me to read about on." Uh, about the Dead Sea Scrolls. You can actually like, get them themselves, I mean, online. <laughs> yeah, like sure. The Nag Hammadi Library. Uh, um, I saw bits and pieces of them at a museum in, uh, at the Science Museum in uh, St. Louis, I think. Um, and, and some of them are quite interesting, like some of the books in the Apocrypha are quite right. interesting. There are a lot of these scrolls where, the, you know, they, um, for example, there's the Gospel <laughs> of Thomas, which right. when, when you read it, it's, it sounds like, it reads like a student sitting in class taking notes <laughs> of what his professor was saying. Because it's basically Jesus just saying a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. And so you can read that and you can sort of get the impression, all right, well, this it was probably a fellow just like listening to his rabbi, his teacher, and taking notes. Yeah, but I mean... So, but what does that say about all of the supernatural and mythical claims of the religion? It doesn't really tell us much, but it does tell right. us that maybe there's 
some sort of historical reference of some kind that's, you know, that we can look at and study more. Yeah, I was just going to say, once you're familiar with the details of the Dead Sea Scrolls, you might want to go up to your mom and say, hey, I read all this stuff, and I'm not following your logic that this somehow proves that the Bible is true. Would you care to elaborate? Because <laughs> chances are she's actually just repeating something that someone said somewhere else, and it's hard to make a coherent argument if you don't actually know the details of that argument. Yeah, her reason for believing is because she had a supernatural experience when she was younger, uh -huh. when um, her sister supposedly spoke in a different language, German to someone behind her, and they had never talked German before, and apparently the person understood them, and she said that another super natural experience of it with my brother and I had never witnessed any of these things so I just I didn't believe them at first because you know I mean she could have just been making those up but and, and how old, in the and case she was, he like, wasn't really really little when these are supposed to happen so it could be yeah it could be a constructive memory she could have been remembering a dream have you, know, you talked to wait you said it was her sister who did this yeah her sister apparently yeah spoke it was her German. sister it is is she still alive? And have you asked if she knows how to speak German? <laughs> or have you asked if this yeah. in, have you asked her if this incident really happened? Um, no, I didn't. But my my she does speak German now. Oh well, so. maybe maybe she spoke German then, and her mo and the your mom just that's, wasn't that's aware what, of that. That's what I assume. That's what I assumed. But the other thing she said was some other weird supernatural thing, like where my brother or whatever almost died or whatever. But she she like right. puts it all like God did it or something, but that doesn't have any proof, even if that did happen, that there was necessarily a God that did it. But that's her reason for believing. That's just so... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Thing. I mean... You know, you can go a number of ways about this. Like, you don't have to convince your mom that she's wrong if you can convince her that you are just going to continue disagreeing about it. But, I mean, if you wanted to investigate the details of this incident, I feel like actually talking to your aunt would be a good start and getting more real details because it doesn't sound like your mom remembers it that clearly. Yeah, the reason... <laughs> And I converted it because um, I didn't agree with most of the things they said, like about how gays should be in hell uh, and yeah. how abortion is wrong. I didn't agree with that stuff, so I just kind of started looking outside of that religion. And then since we believed that real religion was wrong, it kind of just, mm -hmm. that was it. <laughs> well, uh, how old are you now, Emily? Um, I'm 16. Oh, okay. okay. Well, congratulations, because a lot of people... Uh, grow up under religion and they wait until they're 40 to start thinking, hey, wait a minute, I've just spent my whole life devoted to this thing and I, it doesn't really make all that much sense. So, uh, you know, you've got a big head start there. I was, you know, I was 16-ish <laughs> when I started, like, asking real questions. Like, oh, well, but what about X and what about Y? It's, so, it's not always the best thing because then my family, like, uh, my brother goes to high school with me and yeah. well, he told my friends, and I got made fun of it for a while because I live in a small town and most people, um, I live like in a town outside Jacksonville and most people here do not actually like believe in anything but God. So they're really, really hardcore Christians. <clears throat> Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a big it's a big country out there and a big rest of the world. And if you've grown up all your life in a, you know, in a hyper religious southern town, you may not really fully appreciate how what a diversity of different beliefs people have out there. But atheism is growing as a faction that's taken seriously in the United States. And uh I think, uh, you know, growing up this way might be the worst part of your life, and it's only up here from the uphill from here. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for answering my call. We appreciate sure. it, Emily. Thanks very much for calling. Keep asking questions. All right. Have yep. a nice day. Bye. Bye. 
and they have actually fixed, or at least bettered my Yeah, I'm not, I'm not hearing that That's noise scary. anymore. I'm really sorry about that guy. I had no <laughs> idea what was going on. But was yeah, well, you've been a warning to me because I'm going to make sure to check my microphone position from yeah. now on. And it's also probably <laughs> because the way this particular mic is just mounted. So. Right. Uh, also, sorry to you, <laughs> to everyone who listens to this show in the future. Yeah, especially if it's just the podcast version. You're like, crash, right. scratch, scratch, <laughs> scratch, scratch, scratch. Yeah. Uh, who we got next? We have Kieran in London. Hi there. Hello, Kieran. Hello. How are you doing? We are Very well, well thanks. Um, good to hear that. What? What's on your mind? Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask, what are your opinions of Islamophobia? Because as far as I can tell, the term uh, as a phrase has basically been adopted by uh, Islamists to deflect any criticism away from their religion. And I find that that that's very troubling. Uh, my opinions are complicated because uh, the term Islamophobia makes uh, people think that uh, that there is something wrong with a criticism of Islam itself. And obviously we have absolutely right. no regard for any particular uh, religion and we don't give those ideas special treatment. Uh, but on the other hand, I want to make you aware of something, which is that I have uh, had a lot of direct communication with uh, ex-Muslims who uh, grew up under that system and are, you know, of the appearance that one normally associates with Islam, so people can, so people keep assuming uh, that they are Muslim. Uh, and what they say a lot of times is that uh, Islamophobia isn't necessarily a term that we feel comfortable using, but there definitely is a lot of anti-Muslim bigotry out there. And yeah. anti-Muslim bigotry basically being jumping to conclusions uh, and, and uh, making assumptions about people based on the way they look, but also like trying to suppress people from practicing religion in ways that are not harmful. Uh, so for instance, uh, we have a political candidate here, Donald Trump, who recently said that it would be a really good idea to ban all Muslims from coming into the United States from now on. Yes, I agree with that. I, I completely agree with that. Okay, do we not, do completely do not agree with that. Wow. And, yeah, because I mean, what did we just have? You know, yeah, yeah, I mean, just yesterday <laughs> in Kalamazoo, Michigan, we had um, someone driving around the city just randomly shooting people dead. Was it a Muslim? No, it was a white guy. So this right. just not, this assumption that yeah, you make that an entire that, class of people are right. are right. going to be a, a higher threat, you know, moves away from you know legitimate criticisms of a belief system to just xenophobia, and that's where the, I think the line needs to be drawn. You know, but, but the difference the difference is he didn't do that because he is a white person uh, wanting to um, you know. Enforces sometimes they do. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, no. Seriously. No, sometimes have... people will say that the uh, you know that that the reason that they shot people. I mean, there are racists out there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and white supremacists. Uh, and there are people who do, who explicitly kill people for uh, uh, for racial reasons because yeah. that person is of the wrong race and they were getting uppity. Should yes. I, as a white person, be held responsible for that guy's actions? No, of, of course not. But that's because you can't make a logical connection between having white skin and committing these acts of violence. Whereas you can make a logical connection between the, the ideology of Islam and the kind of violence that you, that you see, uh, so why aren't we talking about banning all racists from the United States? Uh, well, hold on. No, we're talking about we're talking about ideology here. So yeah, racism, have, racism is an ideology. <laughs> and okay, if you if you could, for example, make uh, a connection between uh, specific biblical passages uh, advocating violence against uh, gay people. And and say, all right, well, that's a reason that uh, you know Christianity is dangerous, and so right. we need Our, to now monitor and 
uh, limit the movement of Christians. Right. So Are you yeah. aware of this Ugandan movement, which is spearheaded by a number of American fundamentalists that is basically pushing to uh, pass laws that <coughs> require the execution of people in Uganda for the crime of being homosexual? I'm not. I'm not. Okay. okay. Well, That's a thing. Yeah. Uh, an American <laughs> pastor here named Scott Lively I okay. was involved in that legislation. And the that is directly tied to their literal belief in the Bible. So should we be banning all Christians from the United States? Yeah. Funny, so even if, you can if, if you... are a country that had um, a problem with, say, I don't know, um, communists immigrating into the country, and you knew that a specific, a, a, a consistent number of communists that were immigrating were going to go, starting to go around blowing themselves up and killing the locals in the name of communism, then yeah, I think it would be a very sensible thing to at okay. least temporarily restrict the number of communists that were coming into the country because you knew that as an ideology, that was going to lead to specific types of violence that you wanted to limit. And until you could figure out a way of screening those communists that had that violent tendencies and those who didn't, something which is very difficult to screen, it's, it's very difficult to screen someone's ideas. So again, why are we not uh, why are we not banning other specific groups of ideologies like uh, well, I think if like you could racism? Ban racism from coming into America, then you should ban racism from coming into America. <laughs> if you could ban, yeah, but well, what about uh, the ones that were here all along? You see, I mean, what, it's it's or, uh, as in what deport them where deport what Americans born in America who happen to be racist? Where would you deport them to? Well, See, that's the, same question about, for Muslims who have already li who have grown up in America, because there no, are those too. The, the point is that Donald you can. Trump there is are banning Muslims from coming into the country, not yeah. Muslims who are already in America, and I think that's a very sensible decision. I well, think that if you know that a certain percentage of these people have ideologies that yeah. are completely incompatible with uh, Western society. Really? Because yeah. I I actually went to a, uh, uh, like, the uh, Islamic Center in Islam and had, uh, like, a day-long session with a bunch of people who uh, did not at any point attempt to blow me up or try uh, or say anything that was incompatible with America. They said some weird bullshit that I didn't agree with, but that is the case for most Christians I come across, and I'm not trying to kick not them out of the country because of the Uganda incident. Yeah. I'm not denying that the vast majority of Muslims aren't peaceful uh, people that just want to get on with okay, their Okay, then what's the issue? Well, no, you just said that being a Muslim is incompatible with being American. So how do you square that with what you just said, that the vast majority of them aren't a problem? I would say that Islamic ideology is completely incompatible with Western society. Uh, I would say that I would say the same about Christianity. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, all the I mean, the luckily, <laughs> uh, none of the Abrahamic religions I think are compatible with modernity. You know, and a lot of the ideas that we like to subscribe to today, you know, uh, <clears throat> equality, uh, you know, human rights, things like that. You know, you could point to pretty much all of the. Uh, points in any of the, uh, uh, the the Abrahamic religions and say, well, this is not compatible with the way, you know, with post-Enlightenment thinking. Right. For example. Luckily, <laughs> most of Christianity doesn't get taken seriously by most Christians. Yeah. And I think that is a fortunate thing, and it's too bad that they still say that that terrible book is the basis for their ideology. But fortunately, people deal with their cognitive dissonance in different ways. Do you think that all religions are equally um, dangerous or likely to lead to people uh, committing violence? I because don't in see opinion, it in Islam, terms... Islam is by yeah. far the most evil religion. I don't see it in terms violence. of this general measurement type thing because everybody is different in the way they but practice just, their just, religion. Let's try, to, let's, try, let's try to sum it up here. Kieran. Yeah. Um, I mean, yes, yeah, so you, you look at, for example, uh, the way things are in uh, Islamist theocracies that exist today. You look at Saudi Arabia and you say, okay, this is a profoundly <laughs> oppressive theocracy with some terrible human rights violations and ideas. And uh, uh, this country is something that is being run on very strict fundamentalist, uh, you know, uh, Islamist uh, principles. And so, yeah, you can it's demonstrable right there that this is bad for people's happiness, um, and you know, and certainly you know marginalized groups, women, minorities, what have you. 
You can look at that and say a, a country that is run. A, so you can, yeah, and yes, you can look at fact that there are. Hang on, let me let me let me just let me get around to this. But at the same time, you know, the um, I have lived in the Middle East, right, and um, and there are one and a half you know billion Muslims in the world, right? So if the only thing, the only thing that was motivating. Muslims to kill people was, you know, Islam saying, you know, Allah says, die Yankee dog, right? They'd all be killing everyone, right? And it would be, oh, that, that would be the, 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 the only motivation that they needed. If that, if that was like a necessary thing to be a proper Muslim was to no, smite the unbeliever. Muslims, and, most, and, right, most Muslims, like most Christians, they actually don't really know the Quran very well. They don't know what Muhammad's life was. Well, right? good. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's no yeah. problem. Yeah. And, but but, again, but if you're willing to admit, Kieran, right. well, if you're willing to admit that the vast majority of Muslims, just like the vast majority of Christians, do not pay attention to, know about, or adhere to the parts of their holy books that you know command do this violence, kill this, kill that, why then would the on what basis are you making then the argument that this no only Muslims should be kept from should be screened from entering a country, but we shouldn't but we shouldn't have to do that to Christians. Okay, See, I mean that that is where I think what is that is where I think prejudice is coming in into the fore here. Nice yeah. thing. There there is not this on off switch that you seem to think that there is. There there isn't one group on one side who are these peaceful, fluffy, bunny, moderate Muslims, and then a few lunatics in the corner who call themselves extremists. Nobody thinks of themselves as an extremist. These jihadists I know that <laughs> they're doing it heroic. There is a sliding, there is a sliding scale in extremism, in as much as there is a sliding, sliding scale in the levels of support to specific doctrines within Islam. Right. Many, um, so Same moderate. with Christianity. Yeah. That, that's why, like, why, why, why do you continue to, to compare it to Christianity? Why can't we just have a discussion because, about? Because Islam? you have this incredibly stupid notion that screening people just based on a binary, uh, binary property. Uh, where the vast majority of people who fall into that category don't commit terrorist acts or want to, yeah. uh, you that's that the why I'm responding. You, you, have a I'm done. you have a preconceived idea that <clears throat> Muslims are just, well, you've cut them off. I was going to say Muslims, I'm sorry. Muslims in ways that absolutely nobody else who has a potentially dangerous ideology possesses are... A much higher risk of, of falling down that sliding scale into violence uh, than other groups, and I don't th and you don't have a basis for that. And my own experience, uh, you know, working and uh, living among Muslims in their own, you know, uh, turf uh, wouldn't support that either. They were they were super friendly, perfectly normal people who just like us wanted to live their lives and go about their days. If the religion is practiced to and and to its fundamentalist uh, extremes, and if uh, it is certainly ruling a theocratic nation, right? Yeah, I mean, if America became a Christ the Christian theocracy that Ted, you know, that Ted Cruz seems to want. Oh yeah, I mean, that would you, be a disaster. I mean, we've already got a guns problem in this country as it is. You know, do you think? I mean, the idea that there isn't Christian-inspired violence. I mean, what do you think abortion clinic shootings and bombings are all about? You know, those are Christians who believe right. that they're doing what God wants them to do. And the only th other yeah. thing that I want to say is that we get in, is that when we get into uh, this slope of mm -hmm. uh, of deciding only people of a certain religious ideology can be of my uh, can be mm -hmm. part of uh, our country. One, you play into this notion which fundamentalist Muslims love which is, it is not moderates versus extremists. Uh, mm -hmm. It is all Muslims versus everybody else. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be in that situation because there are a lot of countries uh, that are our allies, which are majority Muslim, uh, and we don't want to help shove them into the arms of those fundamentalists and make them think that ISIS they're, they're like allies. In ISIS's yeah. literature, they're like, we need to eliminate the gray zone. Right. You know, they say we need we want the West to be terrified of every every refugee alive. Yeah. Uh, which would put refugees in the necessary position of simply coming back here where then we can rule over them. Right. You know, because and nowhere else will accept them. 
Also, I would like to add that there are a lot of Christian theocrats who would love if we started setting a precedent for kicking people out based on not being the right religion, because atheists are not <laughs> going to be most of the decision makers drawing those lines. Yeah. Um, so, but this isn't going to stop all the, right. the emails from telling us that we're... Tons. We're going to be yeah, flooded this gonna, week. Yeah, we already gonna, know. Yeah, it's going to be the usual thing. <laughs> all right. But, um, it, Criticizing a religion versus, you know, blanket condemnations yeah. of, of a group of people. Absolutely criticize Islam all you want to. There's yeah. a bunch of horrifying Islam shit Islam in that false. book. Yeah. Islam, By all means. Islam is false. And Islam is... But I mean... are horribly oppressive. Yeah, and uh, and no because and because my ex-Muslim friends don't like the term Islamophobia, I don't use it. But uh, if yeah, you want to know whether Mus anti uh, whether anti-Muslim bigotry is a real thing, yeah. there you I, go. I don't like the term Islamophobia either because right. what it it, it it should be like Muslim phobia should be, but that's an inelegant right. word. But yeah, there's a, there's a difference between yeah. Criticism of Islam and the and the belief system right. utterly valid versus well let's just assume that literally everyone on a boat is coming here to kill us. Uh, okay, that's just yeah xenophobia. Uh, let's see, we're gonna what do we got? Three minutes left. I'm gonna go with Ankh. Ankh. Hello. In peace, peace. here in Austin, how are you doing? Peace, peace. A well-organized lie defeats a disorganized <laughs> truth every time. I know y'all know it's my dad's show, Real Black Atheist of Atlanta. How y'all doing? <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, yeah, what's going on, y'all? Um, I'm gonna be brief. You know, I was uh, I, I just moved here to Austin. You know, my dad lives out in Atlanta. His name is uh, Aunt too. But, um, you know, I had moved out here. Uh, I told my dad, I said, I want to go on my atheist experience show, you know, like I've been on your show. He said, well, he said, it'd be good to wake up the atheists in Texas because a lot of atheists out here in Texas are scared to come out. So he said it'd probably be uh, imperative that if I can be on y'all show and talk about ancient Kemet and where the origins of uh, African spirituality and stuff like that. Because right now, I'm working in security and I'm over here working at the Eastside Church of Christ. And I'm, it, just, it just breaks my heart to see my people going to these facilities knowing that the slave master gave us this religion and they they holding this religion as truth they holding this jesus as he's supposed to be the savior because it, what it was when they took us off the boat they gave us a book and said well this is going to help you get through what we just did to you and i try to explain to the black people that you know this is not really our religion this is the eurocentric religion it's really it's based off of mesopotamia but they, the europeans went into ancient climate they went into uh, uh mesopotamia and started learning uh their work their values and stuff like that and started taking part parts of their religion and making it into their own i know y'all know about the council of nicaea and stuff like that so basically i want to see like i can meet up with y'all for a few weeks and get to know each other become friends and I can come on the show, you know, we can talk about black atheism or whatever, you know, however y'all want to do it, you know. It, I think it would be very interesting for uh, people that watch the show, especially when they see a black man coming out and coming out with atheism saying, look, this is not our religion. Uh, we need to, you know, if you're going to uh, have a religion, go back to African spirituality. Because that's where, that's where the Europeans actually got it from. You know, I can quote a scripture like well, when it talks about the God Kanum, I think in Isaiah 68, verse 4, when it talks about forming man on a potter's wheel, that's the God Kanum in ancient Kemet, you know, him forming a man on a potter's wheel. I mean, I got so much stuff from doing research with my dad and everything. Uh, we just came, we actually been to Egypt. You know, we've been to the uh, Cairo Museum, and we've been to the uh, Doja Pyramid, which is the oldest pyramid in the world, so we don't see how the world could be 6,000 years old. And hey, Doja I'm... actually, they... <laughs> um... We're we're short on time with the show, but uh, do, yes. you said you recently moved out to Austin and you're a black atheist. We would love to right, have right. you, uh, uh, you know, come by dinner this evening or or show up at the studio sometime. Yeah. Just, yeah okay. Okay. Well, y'all are y'all a third year tonight or what? On which y'all meet up group? But uh, I keep missing because y'all work two jobs and stuff like that. This is I don't think right you... now I'm doing security. I'm doing security at the East Side Church, so I don't know where y'all gonna be at after after this. Yeah. No. Oh. Okay. Well, I mean, if you can. Uh, well, 
Check out the website, atheistexperience.com, or atheistcommunity.org, rather, and uh, see if uh, there's anything on our calendar that you're free for sometime. Or just Google Atheist Community of Austin, and all of our different sites will come up, if you can get online and do that. Yeah. And, yeah, then that's the easiest way. But yeah, we're here in town, and so if you ever have like a free minute okay. in your schedule, um, do that.